Hello everyone. Today we will be talking about teaching reading from pleasure to skill. The objectives of our lesson today include to understand the importance of reading habit in learning and acquisition of English as a second language. To replace traditional ineffective reading practices with more learner centric reading pedagogy. If we go to the traditional classroom, we can see that there are certain basic parameters which are followed there for teaching English. These include the use of structural language, the class being teacher led as opposed to being learner centric. Therefore, the learner's mind is also considered to be nothing more than a tabula rasa. For many practicing teachers, Teaching reading encompasses nothing more than teaching the learners how to speak sentences with pauses in their proper places. Decoding the meaning of the text is only through using individual words. These in turn are done by making explicit use of the dictionary. Another major drawback of the traditional teaching method is the use of the text itself. Often it is the same text which is used time and again for practicing reading. Inadvertently this kills the interest which learners might have when trying to read the same story over and over again. In this process reading becomes reduced to nothing more than a mere understanding of the text. The pleasure of reading and getting to know something new is totally lost. Another problem with this method is while reading the same thing, students inadvertently end up trying to guess the meanings of the words. Making use of extensive reading is a solution to the problem because in this case the fluency that is the speed of reading can be increased since the text to be chosen are in keeping with the learners needs. This will in turn encourage learners to try to guess the meaning from the context without running back to the dictionary for every small little detail. Now let us look into some of the common reading practices in schools today. Often the lesson is chosen from the prescribed textbook and learners are asked to read those aloud. They take turns to do this. Sometimes the teacher reads the lesson before the learners who in turn acts as a model for the learners to follow. In this process as well, the teacher makes it a point to give a certain amount of corrective feedback in terms of wrong word pronunciations. Sometimes she also ends up explaining the difficult words or phrases. At a more advanced level, the teacher encourages silent reading of the text where in case of getting stuck, the students are made to use the dictionary to clarify the word meaning. Finally, this is followed by asking comprehension check questions in the form of exercises which appear at the end of the text. This eventually leads to a longer writing passage. In all these kinds of practices, we see that the learners do not get the autonomy to choose their own texts. Also in this process, the teacher is at the center of the event. The learners are put in the periphery. There is no assurance that the learner will enjoy the given text to the optimum level as it may have many explicit learning filters which may not be culturally appropriate in all cases. In this scenario, to include extensive reading will motivate the English as a second language learner to
to read more of the target language as it involves texts which do not have any direct learning implications. These texts are purely for content and increase the learner's interest to read more. Extensive reading has been defined differently by numerous ELT experts. Some call it reading for pleasure, while others simply refer to it as reading for non-academic purposes. Today we will look at what O'Malley has to say about extensive reading. This was published in an article by him in 2008. He says that students read a lot and they need to read often. There is a wide variety of text types and topics to choose from, keeping in mind the interest level of the learners. These texts are therefore not just interesting, but they are also engaging and compelling. Extensive reading also gives the students the chance to choose what they want to read. Reading purposes focus only on pleasure, information and general understanding. Reading is its own reward as there should not be any comprehension check questions following an extensive reading text. There are no tests, no exercises, no questions and no use of the dictionaries. This in turn helps to take the pressure off the learners backs to have complete understanding of each and every word written in the text. These materials are also within the language range of the learners. Reading in case of extensive reading is an individual and silent activity. Each student is engaged with a text of his or her own choice and also one which is pitched at his or her own level of competence. Here the focus is on faster, more fluent reading rather than a slow and deliberate approach and trying to understand every single little thing of the text. The teacher explains the goals and procedures clearly and then monitors and guides the students. In the best possible scenario of an extensive reading class, we also find the teacher to be a model who reads her own text along with the students who are engrossed in reading a text of their own choice. That is the best extensive reading class. The direct beneficiaries of extensive reading are adult EFL and ESL learners in the immigrant context. Having English as their second language or foreign language, these learners do not get much opportunity to read the English texts apart from the academic ones prescribed to them. Here extensive reading comes in in the form of pleasure reading. It helps them to acquire the language more than concentrating on the meaning of the text. Some of the benefits of extensive reading include the following. Extensive reading can help to move the focus from plugging the gap activities to actually fixing the problem at hand. Instead of responding to only immediate problems, they encounter, extensive reading can help with consolidating vocabulary, fluency and strategies in an ongoing and natural manner without pressurizing the learner in any way. By encouraging extensive reading in the class and at home, students get to spend more time reading which helps in the acquisition of the English language. Also, this time is not dependent on a teacher. 
the student is free to choose a time of his convenience be it early in the morning late at night or in the middle of the day every class contains students who range in ability especially the ability to read properly extensive reading is useful even in this scenario in case of extensive reading the text which the student reads is a text of his or her own choice and also the level of the text is as per the level of the learner's proficiency not only are students having more time for task but also by choosing a more appropriate book they are learning at their own pace and level as well often these adult efl learners have young children by spending time reading the adults can pass on the habit of extensive reading in turn helping to improve the language proficiency of their children as well this way we can see how extensive reading permeates from the higher to the lower age groups too in the immigrant contexts many researchers have claimed that extensive reading is the key to enhance lexical knowledge of the l2 learners a study conducted by pigada and schmidt in 2006 in the university of nottingham shows that through extensive reading learners could show immense progress in their knowledge of vocabulary the authentic texts were used over the prescribed texts which helped to improve learners proficiency in reading this brings us to another fact which nation states in 2001 he claims that in extensive reading texts at least 95% of the words should be known to the students this in turn will help to improve the speaking fluency of the learners also since the focus is on only 5% of the new words this in turn helps learners to acquire the new words faster in this case the readers which are chosen for the learners to read from are also graded this means that there are numerous levels of texts available a learner can pick a text pitched at a lower level and slowly progress on to a higher level text which has more difficult words this helps further in taking the pressure of the learning burden nation's study showed that the learners could guess the word meaning in context successfully as the level of the grading went higher they could also identify the grammatical categories of the words used the procedure to the classroom practice over there includes choosing the themes of the text based on the learner's choice to select texts and simplify them to avoid lexical complexity or the teacher can also create texts of her own keeping in mind the learner's levels the learners should also be given a choice to select their own texts and they should be assessed only on the use of the target words this will help to ease the learning burden for the novice learners challenge 1 reading books in english is too hard for the esl learners due to the learners less competency in vocabulary the teachers might be reluctant to ask the learners to read books on their own this results in a cyclical process wherein a vicious cycle develops of the reader not wanting to read because of lack of vocabulary and the lack of vocabulary hampering the progress of the reading speed itself as a consequence students rarely associate reading with an enjoyable activity therefore learners perceive reading to be too difficult and are often demotivated from reading 
The solution to this problem would include to make use of graded readers, wherein no gap exists between the knowledge of the language with the learners possess and the level of the text which they are given to read. This helps in giving the learners an attainable target in turn making reading more enjoyable. Numerous levels of texts can be taken with many samples of each book at the various levels. This helps to provide choice in terms of not only the grading of the books but also the theme which a learner can take up. All proficiency level students who make up the class will therefore have access to reading material of their own choice in this matter, thereby helping to solve the problem of words being too difficult to comprehend in the texts given to the learners. Another problem which is faced includes less importance being given to reading. In the normal language classroom, the skill of reading is viewed as a redundant boring activity. This also depends on how reading is valued in the learner's own language and cultural spheres. Extensive reading has a solution for this as well. Extensive reading is an activity which does not have any explicit learning goal. However, it adds to the learner's overall improvement of the language. Numerous researchers have proved this. For example, let us look into the research of Ellie in 1991. He has expressed that extensive reading has helped with improving speaking and gaining control over the syntax. Reading also improves writing as suggested by Sang in 1996. Adopting extensive reading is therefore the best way of providing learners autonomy to choose their own texts. Another major merit of this way of reading is that it can happen without much on the spot assistance and learners become independent readers. The teacher's role is put into the periphery and the learner comes into the center. Challenge 3. How to find time for extensive reading in the tight schedule of the classroom? This is a question which plagues most teachers in our country today. This is a major stumbling block. But extensive reading has a solution to this problem as well. In the initial stages of adopting extensive reading, the learners require on the hand help from the teachers. Therefore, a lot of classroom time is taken up. But with more practice, the learner is slowly weaned away from the help of the teacher. The learner now begins to take up the reading activity at home at his own pace and leisure. This in turn helps to take the pressure off the English language class. At best what the teacher needs to do at this juncture is have some pre-reading tasks which helps to set the tone for the learners to read at home. This can be followed up by the post-reading tasks wherein the teacher can ask some basic questions to gain an understanding of the student's overall understanding of the text. This will also increase the sense of responsibility of the learners since the onus of reading the text and understanding and consequently participating in classroom activities is on the learner himself. In conclusion, we can say that extensive reading is an important aspect of the curriculum today. It is useful for learners at all levels of proficiency. The ease of access to materials which this provides is one of its salient features. Extensive reading can be used by teachers irrespective of their years of teaching experience and lead to meaningful class hours. It can also be used with ease for learners of all proficiency levels and across curriculums. So far,
far we have been talking about extensive reading as has been found in researches the world over. But will extensive reading be as useful and appropriate in the Indian context? Let us see a research and find out for ourselves. To test out the benefits of extensive reading, a research was conducted in India. In this, class 9 learners were selected from a state board and were provided with a training program in extensive reading for the period of one month. 30 girls from a regional medium school in Kolkata were selected for the study. In keeping with the principles of extensive reading, texts were selected for these students after conducting a survey of the learners' choices of materials to read. Consequently, texts pertaining to fairy tales, detective stories, folk tales and biographical anecdotes were chosen as materials of extensive reading for these learners. The learners were provided with samples of these texts by the teachers. Some of the texts were teacher written and a few others were abridged versions of popular stories. A few of the texts which were used for this extensive reading program included Cinderella, Tenali Raman, Sir Albert Einstein, The Monkey and the Cap Seller and so on and so forth. Most of these stories were considered to be important, adventurous, entertaining and engrossing by the learners themselves. All these things were keeping in with the philosophy exhibited by extensive reading wherein the text should appeal to the learners. Apart from the extensive reading part, this study also focused on developing the summarizing skills of the learners. After the training program of one month, the student's performance of summarizing was tested against their performance a month prior to the training. It was found that there was development not only in the quality of the summaries produced in terms of organization, content matter and grammatical aspects, but also the reading fluency of the learners also underwent a sea change. Learners who earlier could hardly make out one word from the other and had to refer to the dictionary for every fourth word they encountered were now able to read fluently for whole sentences. The length of the text in these cases had also been gradually increased from about 100 words to 200 words. This in turn was in keeping with the aspect of reading texts being graded and increasing with the increase in reading ability of the learners. Another important aspect to be mentioned here is that Krashen talks about his input hypothesis which states that for development of language the text should be pitched at a level of I plus 1. But in case of extensive reading, stalwarts explain that since fluency is the focus, the level of the text should be pitched at I minus 1 level of learner's proficiency. This also is in keeping with what Nation stated earlier of having 95% of known words in a text. In conclusion, we can say that in this study it was found that extensive reading has very positive effects as far as developing the writing abilities of these students were concerned. Therefore, we have just now seen and experienced for ourselves how an extensive reading program can be incorporated within an Indian classroom across curriculums. In conclusion, we can say that the importance of extensive reading cannot be overstated. It is useful for learners at all levels of proficiency. The ease of access to the materials which this provides is one of its salient features. It can be used by teachers 
irrespective of their years of experience and lead to meaningful class hours. It can also be used with ease for learners of all proficiency levels and across curriculums. Also, as reported in numerous researches, extensive reading works as a scaffolding for the language learners as the texts are chosen from learners' interest and simplified according to their level of comprehension. Extensive reading breaks the traditional framework of wall-bound learning and takes it outside the classroom. In this, learners are exposed to a variety of ideas which automatically leads to their overall development. With this, we come to the end of the lesson today. Hope you enjoyed it. Thank you.